we're kind of in the same, we're all kind of in the same community, so we're bound to bump into each other and, you know, we'll do that six degree thing. When you're writing a book, what's your research process? What type of sources do you look at for when you're trying to put together your enemies and your characters and stuff like that? Okay, um, my research process, um, it, it was really heavy when I started out. Uh, uh, and I was, I went and basically I went to the metaphysical section of the local borders and, and just picked up half a dozen books uh, about the practice of magic. And that was how I, I put together, uh, you know, like the basic magic outline for how it was going to work in the Dresden Files. Um, I also went and did a whole lot of research on um, um, uh, criminal psychology, police behavior, uh, investigation, um, uh, forensic, forensic evidence, that sort of thing, uh, partly because I just thought it was cool, uh, and uh, uh, partly because I wanted to have that sort of background for before I went into it. Um, Writer's Digest put out a series of books called the How Done It books, uh, in which, yeah, I mean, if you if you know what they are, they're they're invaluable. You know, they include titles like Deadly Doses: A Writer's Guide to Poisons. You know? <laughs> I love that. Um, when I hit a particular novel, um, I'll, I'll do some research over uh, whatever uh, our, our, you know, our, our current beastie is. Uh, you know, so the, um, I did all the, magic, all the magic research for the first book. For the second book was werewolves. I went out and dug up all this werewolf information, which was much more uh, diverse and, and, and odd than I thought it would be. Because um, uh, uh, it turns out that the Hollywood version of werewolves is, is sort of the, you know, hey, it's a, a wolf guy and Let's steal some stuff from vampires because that's cool. Um, so, you know, and the, and the same deal with, with vampires or whatever. I would go out and research actual folklore and, and try and find uh, what I could come up, come up with there. Uh, by the way, if you're going to do the same thing, I recommend that you go to the children's section of your library and do your folklore research starting there. Uh, because in the children's section, they just want to tell you the story. Uh, uh, if you go to the adult section of uh, mythology or folklore or whatever, uh, you're not going to be able to go like three pages without running into Freud or Young. And, and the, I mean, it just it just turns dry and sort of shrivels up in your imagination. Uh, uh, it, it's awful what, the, what, what, what they can do to, to, to really good folklore. Uh, but the kids' folklore, I think, is best at the library. And then the other great source for folklore is to actually go to a given location and look up the local authors who actually write that area's ghost stories, that area's creepy legends, and so on. That's really where you find your, your very best material. Um, but we're kind of going far afield now. But, uh, but that's pretty much the research process. Uh, hi. I wondered how Nicodemus and Tessa ended up getting married because it seemed like he was the first denarian, sort of a big shot, and she was a temple slave in the Temple of Isis. And I also wondered if he had any alternate forms other than just the shadow. Oh, um, Nic oh, Nicodemus and, and Tessa's uh, relationship, oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, that wouldn't be the kind of story I think I would enjoy writing. Um, and it would be the kind of story I wouldn't want anybody under like 16 reading. <laughs> There was bloodshed and chaos and murder and, and cities abandoned uh, during the course of their romance. Um, you know, kind of a fall of the Roman Empire sort of thing. Um, uh, as far as as far as he was having an alternate form, uh, uh, like the other denar denarians do, no, no, he just has his shadow to do things for him. You know, if you go relying on an alternate form to get things done, well, that puts you in personal danger because you're still inside there. Uh, uh, Nicodemus is much more practical than that. Uh, I'd rather stand over here and watch something else kill. Uh, you actually get the work done. Uh, unless it's something cool like a Knight of the Cross, in which case he's still got something to prove. Uh, so, you know, the poor kid, he was, he was the guy whose team never really came in first place uh, when he was in Little League. Uh, <laughs> so now he's, got, now he's got a big toot about it. Hey, Jim. Hey. So, this is going to give you a kick, because I know you're going to like it. While reading changes, about the end of the book, it's like, oh, we're closing up the book, that's great, get ready for the next wave. Let me go back three or four pages, I missed something. <laughs> so I went back, I read three, more, three or four more pages, I was like, damn. Alright, no spoilers guys, sorry. Um, so my question is, 
like everybody in this room, we are all waiting with bated breath for ghost stories. Can you give us a teaser, pretty please? <laughs> for ghost stories? Okay, anybody who doesn't want a teaser, just stick your fingers in your ears or something. Uh, um, yeah, ghost story um, uh, is, is, is so named because Dresden gets stuck with solving his own murder. Um, but, uh, you know, he actually gets sent back to handle it, except there's no body available, uh, so he has to do it as a ghost, uh, which is why it's called Ghost Story. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, that's, that's our basic outline for the book. Um, Dresden has to go, and he has to, he has to deal with all the laws of, of being a supernatural spirit and a ghost and so on from the other end of the stick, uh, uh, which is really, I, I have a great time with it because he's just... So not competent at that. <laughs> competent generally, but not at that. You know, uh, 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 I, I think I think one of my favorite bits so far about it so far is, uh, you know, when he, he's learning your basic ghosty stuff, and he says, you know, and, and I finally understand why it is that ghosts are always howling and moaning when they appear out of the floor or the wall. Passing through that stuff hurts. <laughs> It's no, no great mystery there. Uh, uh, but that's the that's what we're looking at in the next book. I, I'm not even done writing it yet. Let's 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 not get ahead of ourselves. Please, morning, Jim. How are you? Uh, just a real uh, quick question. I was wondering what your uh, personal take was on what the Sippy Channel, uh, excuse me, the Sci-Fi Channel, <laughs> did with their adaptation of the Dresden Files into a television series. Yeah, and I see. I always shorted into the Syphilis Channel myself. Because <laughs> really, that's what it looks like to be reading each number. I think Shannon noticed that before I did, uh, uh, but now I can't get that out of my head. Uh, as far as what they, as, as the, the Dresden Files TV show went, could have been worse. That's, uh, as I look back on it, that's kind of where I am. Could have been worse. Um, they could have messed it up much more badly than they did. Uh, you didn't see the first treatment. Uh, 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 I was actually, you know, when they, when they got, when they brought Robert Wolf in to work on it, they, he was the one who actually kind of steered it back towards, hey, you know, there's already perfectly good material to use in the books. Why call it the Dresden Files and then not use it? And uh, I don't think anybody agreed with him until uh, actually uh, David Howe's kid. David Howe went home with a bunch of Dresden swag for the presentation thing, and apparently his kid picked up Stormfront and then read Full Moon and Grave Peril before the weekend was over, and was going off about how great they were. And so I guess then he came back into the next meeting and said, "Why don't we do it like in the books?" And all of a sudden, everybody thought that was a fantastic idea. <laughs> But, but yeah, I mean, uh, I got to go up on this and be on the set and, and, and be in an episode, which was cool. I got my Stan Lee points. And, uh, uh, you know, I got to, at one point I got to, um, uh, they, this is, they, they took me up to Comic-Con and had me appear on stage with Paul while they were showing an episode. And then I got to go out to dinner with, uh, the, with David Howe and Harry Dresden and Guy Baltar and Six. Um, David Howe, Harry Dresden, Guy Baltar are all British. And they all like football. And so they were talking British football at one end of the table. So I just had to man up and, and, and chat with six. <laughs> and, and she was like so just depressingly normal and straightforward and, and, and you know, level headed sort of person. We traded pet stories. Uh, that kind of thing. Uh, uh, but just in case you wonder. First, I have to plug my future profession. Reference librarians are your friend. I'm sorry, I can't watch echoes. What? Reference librarians for future research. They are your friend. Yes, um, yes, they are. 